praise Him for His guiding hand. I'm trusting to the unseen hand that guides me through this weary land. And some sweet day I'll reach that strand, still guided by the unseen hand. Still guided by the unseen Troubles all around me, worries surround me, heartaches seem to be on every hand. Kind of getting weary, Lord, these eyes, they are so teary. It just makes me think of a better land I've been thinking about home going home with Jesus I've been thinking about leaving all these worries and heartaches behind it can't be too long when it comes for his there's just a few more days and we'll be going home on my own i can't make it all the pressures of this world lord i just can't take it without you kind of got a longing so many are going home it just makes me think i'll soon be gone i've been thinking about home going home with jesus i've been thinking about leaving all these worries and heartaches behind it can't be too long There's just a few more days and we'll be going home. Death is so dividing, Lord, it seems so final. But in your word, you say we'll meet again. It seems like the ending. But a new day will be beginning When all God's children start their life anew I've been thinking about home Going home with Jesus I've been thinking about leaving All these worries and heartaches behind can't be too long when it comes for his children. There's just a few more days and we'll be going home. A few more days and we'll be going the Lord. Okay, let's go. Just buck your seat belt and hang on. Let's go. In the book of Acts chapter number 1 and verse number 6, if you got your Bible, we'll turn there the book of Acts chapter 1 and verse number 6, and we'll start reading verse number 6. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will, that, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? They're concerned about him 
uh, restoring the kingdom to Israel. And he said unto them, it is not for you to, to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own power. You know, they're concerned about the end times, about being restored, you know, everything coming back to what God promised Israel. And, uh, you know, we're concerned about end time things, aren't we? Most of us, most everybody you talk about, well, this is the end time. We're looking for Jesus to come into time, and I think we ought to. But I want you to notice what he said. And maybe he's saying that to us too. But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria unto the uttermost parts of the earth. What about that? He's saying you're concerned about the end time, be concerned about having the power of the Holy Ghost on you, being a witness. Because he said in Matthew 24, when this gospel has gone into all nations for a witness unto all people, or all the nations, then shall the end come. I think that is the sure sign of the Lord's coming when all the nations have heard the word of God and they've heard about the gospel of grace, then the Lord Jesus is going to come. Only he knows when that happened. Let's pray. Father, it's a blessing to be here today. Thank you for the good word of God. Thank you for mercy. Thank you for grace. We need you touch to me. We need your blessings. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, breathe life into our words, illumination in our thoughts, and we'll give praise and give honor to you and say thank you in Jesus' lovely name. Amen and amen. I want to speak to you today upon this thought, the power of Pentecost, the power of Pentecost. I know that Pentecost will not be repeated because God don't have to repeat Pentecost, but we need the power that he promised there in the book of Acts chapter 1. Do you desire the outpouring of the Holy Spirit? How many say, I'd like to see an outpouring of the Holy Spirit on us? Amen. Uh, do you want the power to be a witness? Do you want God to give you power to be a witness? You just want the power to go out, show, show off or something, say, look here, I got all this power. Hey, he wants us to have a power to witness. Would you like to see uh, God's mighty power move today? Well, there's a price tag to power, right? There's a price tag. You don't get anything are free except salvation. Salvation is free, right? And, uh, but when you get power, there's a price tag to it. Uh, God's not going to give you power if he don't see that you are qualified to have that power upon you. So we need the power of the Holy Spirit, but we need to pay a price. And this generation is not willing to pay that price. Uh, people walk up to the door of salvation, look in and say, well, yeah, there's eternal life, there's heaven and all that, but I don't think I want it right now. I've got too much living to do. I've got uh, some more drugs I want to take. There's some more alcohol I want to drink. There's some more parties I want to go to. There's some more fun I want to have. And so they so walk away and say, I don't think I want it right now. And so they turn down salvation, like going to Walmart, walking through the store, uh, probably a thousand million pieces of uh, items there, and you walk through and say, I'm just looking. I'm just looking. That's the way people do about salvation. They come to church and they'll say, I'm just looking. Well, hey, come to get something. Come to get the power of the Holy Spirit. Get the touch of God upon your life. Well, I want to say, first of all, it takes confession and repentance. If we want God's power upon our life, it takes confession and repentance of sin, doesn't it? Is there any sin in your life that is unconfessed? Is there any sin in the past that is unconfessed? Any sin in the present that's unconfessed? Hey, we have to confess our sin. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Amen. To confess means to say the same thing about your sins that God says about them. Hey, we don't like to say, oh, Lord, my sins are dirty, they're black, they're ungodly, they're wicked. We don't like to say that, but that's what they are. Sin is black in the sight of God Almighty. And so we got to say the same thing about our sins that God says about them. And we can't, uh, we can't coat them over, we can't butter them up, we can't save them and say, well, they're not as bad. Hey, they're all bad. Sin is bad in the sight of God. Uh, God is a holy God. If you could see just today how holy God is, brother, he's a holy God, isn't he? He sure is. And so we need to recognize that. And so we need to confess our sins. Well, you say, I don't know about that. Well, listen, let me go back to the Bible and just give you a few folks that confess their sins. I mean, good people, great people, mighty people uh, confessing their sins. We have to confess. All of us have to say we've sinned. We've all come short of the glory of God. There's none good, no, not one. The Bible said there's none righteous, no, not one. Brother, out of Christ, there's none of us good. There's nothing good about any of us, brother. All our righteousness is the filthy rags in the sight of God. This is all my righteousness, nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ. In the book of Ezra, chapter 10, verse 1, now when Ezra had prayed and when he had confessed, weeping, cast himself down before the house of God. Here's this great man, Ezra. He's a priest. And here he is uh, casting himself down before uh, the house of God. And he's weeping and he's confessing. Hey, what you got to confess? He's confessing sin. 
That's what we got to do, confess sin. Nehemiah, chapter Nehemiah, chapter 1, he confessed the sins of the children of Israel, which we have sinned against thee, both I and my father's house have sinned. He put himself in there. He just didn't say, well, they've sinned. He said, I and my father's house have sinned. He said, we have dealt very corruptibly against thee and have not kept thy commandments, nor the statutes, nor the judgments which the, thou commandest thy servant Moses. We hadn't kept his commandments. We hadn't kept his judgments. We hadn't done what he says. Hey, have we done what God said today? Can we say, brother, we have done what God wanted us to do? We kept his word like he wanted us to keep his word. And so here's these people. They're great people. They're mighty people. They, they love God and, and they are clean people, but yet they're confessing their sin. Nehemiah chapter 9 and verse 3. And they stood. This is the, the children of Israel in the days of, of, of Nehemiah. They stood in their place and read the word of God, uh, the law of the Lord, uh, for one fourth part of the day. They stood up and read the word of God three hours. Now, if, you know, if I asked you to come in here and we're going to read the word of God, let's stand. And I read 15 minutes. People were sitting down, wouldn't they? Can you imagine folks standing three hours listening to the word of God? Hey, brother, what kind of love do we have? What kind of endurance do we have? What kind of generation? We are a soft generation, right? We are so soft, aren't we? So they, the book of the law of the Lord their God was read for one fourth part of the day and another fourth part of the day they confessed and worshiped the Lord their God. They took another three hours to confess and worship. Hey, you know this generation can't stand over an hour's worship. You know that? That's about all we can stand. It's too long if it's any longer than an hour. Hey, did you see in the Pope there last night? I just had it on, and it's coming up, and there's a talking, and I thought talking there's old Mr. Pope sitting there. I mean, the big man out of Rome sitting there, and the folks coming up and going through all this rigmarole. I don't pay no attention to what they're saying, but I just thought, man, I mean, how long do their services go on anyway? <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Well, back there, they read the Word of God for three hours, and then they confessed their sins and worship for three hours. That's six hours. Hey, hey, brother, we are way behind on confessing and getting things right with the Lord, aren't we? Job, uh, chapter number 40, old Job was a righteous man, the Bible said, but look at here. He said, behold, I'm vile. Job says, I'm vile. He says, therefore have I uttered that I understood not things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. In verse uh, chapter 42, verse 6, he says, I whore myself and repent in dust and ashes. He said, I hate myself I, for what I've done and what I've said. He had said some things he shouldn't have said. He had charged God foolishly. Hey, sometimes we charge God with things. It's not God's fault. It's our fault. It's not God's fault. It's our fault. Sin is our fault. Sin brings a lot of problems upon us, and yet we want to charge God sometimes with those problems. Why would you let this come, Lord? I, I don't deserve this. Hey, brother, we all deserve a lot more we're getting. Amen. That's what David said in Psalm 32. said, I acknowledge my sin unto thee. And my iniquity have I not hid. Hey, how long has it been since you've acknowledged your sin to the Lord? And he said, mine iniquities, my crookedness have I not hid. Hey, you can't hide anything from God anyway. He just wills be honest with you. He just wills come clean with God. He said, I will confess my transgressions of the Lord. Thou forgavest my iniquity and, and of my sin. Boy, he confesses. In Psalm 51, he acknowledges his sin. He confesses his sin and asks God to forgive him. And so we have to do that, don't we? If we're going to have power with God, we've got to confess our sins. We've got to be honest with God. You can't cover it up because, hey, covered up sin is not going to stay covered up. Listen to what Daniel said in chapter 9, verse number 4. Old Daniel, that beloved man, he said, Daniel the beloved. Daniel, greatly beloved of the Lord. Well, Daniel, what are you praying about? I prayed unto the Lord my God and made my confession and said, we have sinned. He put himself in there. Sure, he was praying concerning the nation of Israel, but he's praying himself. He's put himself in that we have committed iniquity. We've done wickedly. We have rebelled even by departing from thy precepts and thy judgments. Neither have we hearkened unto the servants of the prophets. We have rebelled against him, the Lord. Neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in his ways. I mean, brother, he went right down the line confessing sins. If there's going to be any power in your life, there's going to have to be some confession. You're going to have to be honest. God knows whether you're honest or not. You can't lie to him and get by with it. You may lie to the preacher. You may lie to other people. You may lie to your wife, your husband, but you can't lie to God and get by because he knows, don't he? John the Baptist converts. converts. They confessed and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. 
when they came to old John and said, we want to be baptized, he said, you got to confess your sins. And so they confessed their sins. What if we did that? That's what we ought to do, have a confession service sometime. <laughs> well, I don't know if that worked or not. I'll say more about that in a few minutes. Paul's converts at Ephesus, they confessed. Acts 19, 18, and many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. They came and confessed what they'd been doing, confessing their sins. But the Bible says again, as I quoted a moment ago, 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he's faithfully just to forgive us our sin, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Proverbs 28, 13, the Bible said, he that covereth his sins shall not prosper. If you cover your sin, you can't prosper. You can cover it up. You can cover it up. You can cover it up. Nobody will know it. Nobody knows it. Nobody I done it in the dark. Nobody knows it. Hey, God knows it. God sees it. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. You want to prosper? Hey, if you want to prosper, you don't cover your sin. But whoso confesseth and forsaketh shall have mercy. Hey, you know, them catch folks running in that little cubby hole there and say, Father, I've sinned. I got drunk. I, I had an affair last night. I, I took some bunch of drugs or whatever, you know, and uh, I did this or I did that. Well, you know, I, you're forgiven. Hey, brother, you got to forsake those sins. Repentance means you forsake them. I mean, there's a difference between confessing and forsaking. You got to go ahead and go ahead and forsake them. I mean, you got to carry a little farther than confessing, right? Okay, let me come to this. There's two kinds of confessions, two kinds of confessions. First of all, there's confession of sins. And then, of course, there's confession of the Savior. Let's go back to this matter of confessing sins. There's that matter of private confession of your sins to God. Now, I don't want you running up and tell me everything you've ever done. I don't think God wants you to do that. There's some things you just need to tell God Almighty. Everybody don't need to know everything you've ever done.